When Tai Lung and China's greatest villains come back to life, Po must recruit a new dragon warrior to help fight them off. Today we're going to recap the story of the movie, Kung Fu Panda 4, from 2024. In an underground mine, a group of animals are working when all the torches in the place start to go out. Suddenly, Tai Lung appears and causes a fire in the mine, telling the workers to spread the word throughout China that no one will be able to stop him, not even the great dragon warrior. At the new restaurant, Ping and Li Shan are waiting for their son to cut the opening ribbon. Meanwhile, Po is at the edge of the ocean fighting mutant stingrays that are attacking a village. Now that he has mastered Shi, the panda is able to defeat the creatures with ease and tie up the stingray that has eaten some of the kids, returning them safely to their mother. After saving the little ones, Po runs back to the restaurant, but is stopped by a crowd of fans who start asking for autographs. Shifu appears between them and says they need to talk urgently, but Po says he's busy and asks to talk after the ceremony. On the spot, Po shows the staff of wisdom that was given to him by Ogwe himself, saying that it has the power to open the portal to the spirit world, but that now it will open the Dragon Warrior's new restaurant. While people are celebrating, a child asks about the tigress and Po reveals that the Furious Five have set off on different missions across China, separating for the first time. After the explanation, Shifu reappears and repeats that they should talk, taking him to the Jade Palace and saying that it's time to take the next step. Now that he has found inner peace, Shifu says it's time for Po to choose a new dragon warrior and follow in Ogwe's footsteps by becoming the spiritual leader of the Valley of Peace, the highest position in Kung Fu. Thinking he's not ready for this, Po says he'll continue as a dragon warrior for the time being, offering Shifu the position of spiritual leader. But the Red Panda says this is not his destiny, as he was not chosen by Ogwe. Po says that being the dragon warrior is the only thing he knows how to do and says he wants to keep things as they are, but Shifu replies that he has no choice and that the selection of candidates is about to begin. The next day, the warriors who want to become the dragon warrior make their presentations, but despite finding everyone great, Po chooses himself as the dragon warrior. After the event, Shifu and Po talk again and the red panda advises his former student, telling him to ask the universe for answers. While trying to find inner peace, Po sees someone breaking into the Jade Palace and goes there to investigate. There, the thief moves through the shadows like a ninja and manages to pick up various things without being noticed. Looking through the reflection of the Ogwe statue, Po sees the thief and begins to confront him. While dodging the dragon warrior, the thief removes his hood and reveals that she is a fox. As Po wants to prevent the relics from being destroyed, the fox takes advantage of this to distract the panda and bind his arms with a chain, causing him to break the urn of the whispering warriors. When he looks at the fox, Po realizes that she's unconscious and approaches her to see what's happened, but the thief was only pretending and takes advantage of his approach to kick the panda in the face. With that, she gets the staff of wisdom and starts walking towards the exit, but Po doesn't give up and starts kicking several pedestals at her, distracting the fox and trapping her with his chains. In this way, he manages to recover the staff and apprehend the thief. Before she goes to prison, Po starts asking some questions when the mine workers arrive talking about Tai Lung. Confused, Po says that he should be in the spirit realm and decides to set off on a mission to arrest his old rival. In the mines, Po finds the footprints of a snow leopard, which gradually turn into those of a horse and then a reptile. Thinking that the fox has something to do with this, Po goes to the prison to talk to her. On the spot, Jen says that it's none of her business, but that the person who invaded the mine is probably the Empress of Disguise, a chameleon-like sorceress capable of assuming any form she wishes. Confused, Po asks why the chameleon has turned into Tai Lung and wants to confront him, but the fox says he should ask her directly. Thinking it's a good idea, Po asks how he can find her and Jen says she can help, as long as he frees her. While Po is releasing the prisoner, Shifu arrives and tries to interfere, but the panda decides to keep the deal and release the fox to find the chameleon princess. Together, the two set off on a journey to the other side of China, while his parents stay in the restaurant listening to the rumors about the chameleon's power. Far from the Valley of Peace, the Empress of Disguise calls a meeting with the leaders of the biggest criminal groups in all of China. While they wait for her to appear, the bandits start talking to each other about organizing a coup d'etat, without suspecting that the chameleon is disguised among them. After revealing her true form, the villain says she can forgive the offense if the criminals pay 60% of their profits as tribute. Obviously the bosses refuse and the chameleon transforms into an elephant, charging at the bear and knocking it off the top of a ladder. While he rolls, the other criminals flee and the chameleon says she'll be waiting for the tribute until dawn. In the Valley of Peace, Mr. Ping is overcome with worry and decides to go after Po, but ends up bumping into Li Shan, who had exactly the same idea. 
Because of this, the two team up to go after their son, setting off on a journey to find him again. Far away, Poe and the fox finally get to see Juniper City, but they still have to pass a gigantic lake on the way. Wanting to find a captain to cross, the two go to a nearby bar which is full of hostile people. Used to the environment, the fox pretends to be a novice gambler and asks to take part in a betting game. While she takes all the money from the other players, Poe talks to a pelican who agrees to take them. With the money she has obtained, the fox pays for a real feast for her and the dragon warrior. While eating, Poe ends up bumping into the fox who knocks over several pieces she stole to win the game. Furious, the manager confronts Poe and the fox, calling them thieves. Wanting to make things right, the panda says he can pay for the meal, but the boar is thirsty for revenge and orders everyone to go after them. Together, Poe and Jen fight the bandits, but the movement causes the bar to become unbalanced on the rock and sway from side to side. While Poe fights the criminals, the fox takes the opportunity to steal everything she can, forcing the dragon warrior to capture her to return the items. Tired of wasting time, the panda decides to resort to Shi and launches an energy dragon at his opponents, knocking them all down in one fell swoop. Even so, the boar manager remains standing and goes after Poe, knocking him and the fox out of the bar. While the two of them cross the Great Lake, the city's criminals take the tributes the chameleon asked for to the center of Juniper City, but the villain is still not satisfied and demands even more, saying she needs the money to take over China. Back on the boat, the panda and the fox arrive in Juniper City and begin to roam free through the city streets, but only until they are found by the guards. As the fox is wanted for her thefts, the two bulls capture her and start taking her to prison. Since he needs her, Poe tries to interfere and introduces himself as the dragon warrior, saying that she is accompanying him on a mission. Unluckily for him, the guards have never heard of the dragon warrior and arrest the panda thinking he's an accomplice. When that doesn't work, the fox says she'll try it her own way and pulls a master key out of her pocket, opening the lock and running through the city streets. Despite this, the bulls realize that they have disappeared and begin to chase them, forcing the pair to flee through a pipe. On the other side, they fall into a carriage that takes them to a staircase. With nowhere else to go, Poe throws himself on a dragon kite and floats away. On the way, Poe ends up tangled in the line and almost falls in the middle of the guards, but he manages to get back up and rolls down the roof of some houses, falling into a merchant's cart. On the ground, the two run desperately until they reach an alley full of musical instruments. As the guards run towards them, the fox plays a drum that opens a secret passage, entering with Poe at the last second before they are captured. In the underground, Jen tells him that he can rest easy and they are her family, but contrary to what she was expecting, the other criminals are not hospitable and capture the two of them, saying that they are going to eliminate them. To prevent this from happening, the fox warns them that the panda next to him is the dragon warrior, but apparently no one in Juniper City knows Poe. Wanting to avoid conflict, the panda warrior tries to use the wisdom of a spiritual leader and throws in a proverb, saying that he who resorts to violence in the present will only find more aggression in the future. Unfortunately for them, no one understands what he means and they think that if they don't hurt them now, they can let them take their lives in the future, with even more suffering. Despite being the wrong message, Poe manages to get the thieves to leave him alone for a while. On the outskirts of town, Ping and Li Shan arrive at the same bar that their son has just passed. Without suspecting what has happened, the goose approaches and asks if they have seen a panda, saying that it is his father. Upon learning of this, the criminals go all out on the bird, placing its head near a boiling cauldron. With no options, Li Shan steps in and pretends to be Poe's master claiming to be even more skilled than the dragon warrior. Although they're intimidated at first, the animals in the bar soon realize that he's bluffing and go after him, causing Li Shan to back away and almost knock the bar down the slope because of his weight. Because of this, the criminals become afraid and the giant panda decides to take advantage of this, forcing them to tell him where Po has gone and leaving the bar immediately afterwards, causing the structure to collapse as soon as he sets foot outside. In the sewer, Po and Jen spend the rest of the night preparing for the fight. When the sun rises, they go to the wall and sneak inside the statue of a chameleon. Walking through the castle sewers, Poe and Jen come out in front of an army of sleeping guards. Despite the number of enemies, they manage to pass unheard, until Poe lets out a dark snort that wakes everyone up. To escape, the panda runs into the castle and flicks the lever that closes the entrance, but this activates a series of traps that almost hit them. Despite this, the two manage to get out unharmed and arrive in a large room, but a super heavy cage falls on Poe, leaving him completely trapped. Since she can't free him by brute force, Jen tells him that they have to use leverage and Poe hands her his staff. As soon as she has the object in her hands, 
Jen steps away from the cage and hands the staff to the chameleon, revealing that she is a traitor. The Empress of Disguise then reveals that Jen is her apprentice and that she met her while she was trying to rob her, raising the fox ever since. Confused, Po asks why the chameleon wants his staff and she replies that for many years she tried to become a kung fu master, but because she was small, she was never accepted. After so many failures, she gave up fighting and devoted herself to witchcraft, where she learned metamorphosis. Although she can take the form of Tai Lung, she still can't fight like him, because kung fu is in the spirit. That's why she wants the staff to access the spirit realm and steal the skills of all the great warriors. To stop her, Po tries to break the bars with a punch, but the metal is enchanted and practically indestructible. The panda then decides to come out from underneath and hits the ground, ending up in a courtyard full of guards. Despite this, the dragon warrior is much more powerful than everyone else and manages to knock out most of them, escaping without much difficulty. On the wall, Po meets Jen who approaches him with his staff, apologizing for having betrayed him. As he reaches out to take the object, the real fox appears behind him, revealing that the one in front of him is the chameleon in disguise. Taking advantage of the proximity, the sorceress pushes the panda off the wall, causing it to fall hundreds of meters. Luckily, Po manages to hang on to a log, but one of the chameleon's guards is also hanging on and goes after him. Because he has to hold on to the branches, the panda can't defend himself and has to be saved by Ping, who comes gliding in and lands a special flying kick. After his father knocks down the animal, the branch Po is holding breaks and he almost falls, but is saved by Li Shan at the last second. In a safe place, the three of them start talking and Po tells them that the Staff of Wisdom is with the chameleon. Wanting to console his son, Ping tells him that it's past time for him to accept his position as spiritual leader and that change isn't always a bad thing. At the fortress, the chameleon talks to Jen and tells her that she should forget about Po, saying that sentimental people are disposable. While the fox thinks about what she's saying, the metamorphosis sorceress uses her staff to open a portal to the spirit world, summoning Tai Lung to pick up his abilities. Refusing to allow this, the snow leopard starts attacking the chameleon's soldiers, but there's nothing he can do against the Empress of Disguise, who steals his skills with her tongue. Without energy, Tai Lung can barely move and is easily defeated by the chameleon, who traps him in one of the enchanted cages. Now that she has the skills of Shifu's former disciple, the chameleon opens the portal again and brings in the spirits of even more warriors, absorbing them all while Jen watches. On the wall, Po advances towards the chameleon to retrieve his staff. On the way, he meets Jen who is trying to escape. Seeing her old friend, the fox says she made a mistake and apologizes for everything, saying she's sorry. Despite this, Po is very upset and ignores everything she says, walking towards the fortress. To stop him, the fox decides to fight the dragon warrior, taking him one on one. Although his opponent is skilled, Po has no interest in taking her on and tries to move on, but the fox goes after him and hugs him, asking for a chance to do the right thing. In response, Po says that she wasn't the only one who made a mistake and that now he has to make things right, even if he doesn't have much of a chance. As soon as the dragon warrior leaves, Jen and Po's parents begin to think of a way to help and come to the conclusion that they need an army. To do this, they go to the sewer and Jen tries to recruit the city's thieves, but they all laugh at her. Like Po, she tries to use a proverb and also fails miserably, making everyone think she's advising them to take down the chameleon so they can commit whatever crime they want later. Despite this, she manages to get the sewer thugs to agree to fight alongside her, assembling an army of crazies. In the fortress, Po manages to get the guards out of the way and advances towards the chameleon, who continues to take the souls of villains like Lord Shen. Seeing Po, Tai Lung says that he always knew that Ogwe was wrong to choose him as a dragon warrior, but that he only realized the size of his mistake now, when he saw the Staff of Wisdom in the enemy's hands. Despite this, Po says that he will be able to recover the artifact and that he will restore the skills of all the warriors, including Tai Lung. Outside, Li Shan appears in front of the guards and once again tries to bluff them, saying that the lizards will regret it if they don't surrender, but none of them believe the lie and follow the giant panda. Li Shan runs to his army of thieves who start fighting the reptiles, distracting them while Jen invades the fortress unseen. Inside, Po finally reveals himself and says that he has come to retrieve his staff, but the Empress of Disguise simply gives it back, saying that she has already gotten what she wanted. Now that she has the skills of all the greatest warriors and their magic, the chameleon feels invincible and challenges Po, but the dragon warrior still believes she can change and tries to convince her to give up her plans. Obviously the speech fails and the panda ends up taking a spout that sends him flying across the room. Varying between her various forms, 
The chameleon manages to keep the upper hand in the fight against Po, as she now has the ability to do all of them together. Taking advantage of her superiority, the shapeshifter sorceress transforms into Tai Lung and prepares to deliver the final blow when Jen appears, dropping an extremely heavy cage on top of her. Despite this, the chameleon manages to extricate herself quite easily by transforming into an elephant and catching Jen with her trunk. Seizing the opportunity, the fox shoves a seed up the elephant's nose, causing the villain to choke. To end the fight once and for all, the sorceress makes every part of her body take on the characteristics of a different master, transforming herself into a gigantic chimera that destroys the fortress. In the middle of the rubble, she manages to catch Jen and flies away, but Po jumps after her and manages to hold onto the dragon's tail. With great difficulty, the panda manages to climb onto the horn of the chimera empress, pulling her head back and making her loop. With his staff, he manages to hold onto the chameleon and make her do various insane maneuvers, but this makes the villain dizzy and causes the three of them to fall. On the ground, Jen sees Po passed out and runs to help him, without suspecting that it's actually the transformed chameleon. Seeing the clone, Po says he's going to fight her and attacks the villain, causing a flash with the exchange of blows. After the impact, the dragon warrior realizes that his staff has gone too far and tries to run to it, but the chameleon chases him. After kicking her clone, Po manages to pick up his staff and starts exchanging blows with the villain, kicking her into the air. As she climbs, the chameleon uses her tongue to capture Po and throw him against the cages. When she returns to the ground, the villain sets one of the cages ablaze and throws it at Po, causing him to burn his hands trying to defend himself. Not satisfied, the mini version of Godzilla throws even more flaming iron bars, welding the material and leaving Po totally trapped. Wanting to help, Jen tries to free him and Po says it's up to the fox to finish the job, handing her the staff. With the artifact, Jen goes over to the chameleon who starts attacking her almost immediately, squeezing her neck while calling her a traitor. Despite knowing how to fight, Jen doesn't stand a chance against the chameleon, but she manages to find inner peace and uses the staff to launch a she blow that knocks the villain away. Just then, Po appears and congratulates her on her achievement. While they're talking, the Empress of Disguise gets up and jumps at them, but Po notices and jumps at her, hitting her in the head. With the powers of Shi, the dragon warrior returns kung fu to each of the warriors who were brought back, and despite being enemies, they are all grateful and congratulate Po. Even Tai Lung, who says that Ogwe was right to choose him. With the Staff of Wisdom, the panda warrior opens the portal for everyone to return to the spirit world, saying goodbye to his former enemies once and for all. Before leaving, Tai Lung takes the chameleon and enters the portal, saying that one day they will meet on the other side. In the Valley of Peace, Jen is ready to do her time, but Po has other plans for her and says he can get her a job, pointing to the Jade Palace and saying that the fox could be the next dragon warrior. To begin her training, Shifu brings back the Furious Five, bringing in China's greatest masters to train the new dragon warrior. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.